This is a brilliant master clock I've recently had the opportunity to do some work on. Uh, this is just after getting it working and before finishing it to the client's satisfaction. Bit of a detail showing the dial which clearly still needs some work, some rusty hands. The second hand has been repaired or is missing most of it. The bottom half of the suspension spring, you can see the top just disappeared, uh, had to be made, it was missing. Looking down into the movement, you can see two sets of contacts. The one you can see just there closing and opening, closes every second tick. But that's the impulse contacts there inside the movement. There you can see the seconds, which is the slave output connector or, or contacts. They close every second. Here's the back of the, the clock that was removed from the slab. The back of the clock showing contacts. Better view of the contacts and what you might call the count wheel and the condition of the rust on the pendulum before removal. Here's a view of the bottom of the pendulum. We're going to show the uh, bits of the pendulum. Uh, they, the pendulum is a temperature compensating pendulum. The centre part there is made of zinc and the combination of the two downward steel rods and the upward going zinc rod and that movable bracket in the middle which hangs in the rest of the pendulum is the temperature compensation. You notice in detail the coil has a micro adjuster Adjusting this up and down from the top to the bottom of its travel will regulate the clock only by um, seconds a week, but it does make a difference. The clock is extremely stable when operating well attached to a wall. This part here, which was missing, had to be made, uh, is a leveling device to get the clock vertical. <coughs> this part here is a battery holder which was missing. It simply clips in and out and holds a D cell, a one and a half volt battery. You can see at the centre of this little bar that comes out there's a small point and the bottom of the pendulum there's a small point. The clock level has to be adjusted so that that point simply sits as close, to bottom, as, close as possible pointing to each other, those two points. The clock is then in beat as far as the magnet is concerned. Along with many master clocks, the hands have to be balanced, but rather than have an ugly rear end of the minute hand, they put the balance internally on this wheel here. This is a view of the heart of the clock with the two poles that uh, push the, what you might call a count wheel or whatever you like to call it, around once every second, uh, moving this second hand by one unit. A better view of the cam that switches the current on and the cooler once every second, or only on the left hand swing. And here's a final general view of the clock dial. And now a picture of the finished clock. Because the clock was on the other side of the country, uh, I never saw the actual case, so the client has sent me a picture of the clock in the case.